led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was hungry. The tempter approached and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become loaves of bread. He said in reply, It is written, One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and made him stand on the parapet of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, Again it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Then the devil took him up to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their magnificence. And he said to him, all these I shall give to you if you will prostrate yourself and worship me. This, Jesus said to him, Get away, Satan. It is written, The Lord your God shall you worship, and him alone shall you serve. Then the devil left him. Behold, angels came and ministered to you. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. blessings that we have today is that in our congregation we have three of our candidates and three of our uh, getting ready to be baptized parishioners, uh, Victor, Peyton, and Betsy. So they will be today uh, brought into the uh, right of election. So they will be part of the elect and after the homily. We'll have that a beautiful event, so we'll journey with them until Easter. They've been journeying already, and uh, this is kind of like the final stretch. So we're very happy to have you with us as we get ready to uh, celebrate with you very soon, as you will be fully incorporated into the church. When I was a kid, when I was a child, there was a TV program that was called The Wide World of Sports. I think. It was on NBC, I believe, and it, it featured kind of like uh, special athletic events and uh, uh, just competitions from different sports. And I remember the intro to that program, it, it always talked about the ecstasy of victory and the agony of defeat. And that was kind of like part of the... Uh, way that they would feature the different stories, but I was thinking as I reflected on the readings today and as we begin our Sundays of Lent together, that the sports imagery, it's a good imagery for Lent because there is uh, a kind of perseverance, uh, a kind of uh, doing the things that we're supposed to do even when in pain, and athletes reflect a lot of that. I know that I've, I've done a few uh, sports in my life. I've been a, a runner in like races and things like that. And you know, for some reason, uh, right before the race, something always happens. You have to kind of, there's always a story, a uh, personal story is how you're gonna deal with the event itself. And, and there are some great, great stories. I was uh, thinking of one that came to mind 
I think it was a, a, a U.S. skater. I think it was Dan Jansen. And this is uh, from back in the 80s. But Dan Jensen, he was uh, an ice skater, and he competed in, in Olympic competitions. He actually, in practice, he had like the best records ever. He, he was really breaking uh, records in practice. But when he would come to the Olympic Games, I remember the first time uh, in one of the competitions that he was supposed to win, he, he fell. And then he had to wait four more years for the next Olympic. And I remember uh, that Olympic, he had lost a sister. One of his sisters died to leukemia. And actually, I think it was either the day of the competition or very close to the competition. So it was kind of like he was the emotional favorite to win. And he fell again. And I remember watching that on television. Oh my God, he did fall again. So he was not going to win it. I think it took him like seven tries until he finally won an Olympic gold medal. And I think it wasn't even in his best competition. It was kind of like the 1,000 meter dash or something like that. And he finally got the medal. But that was like seven tries later and he persevered. And I remember because the victory lap for that competition when he finally won the gold, he took, at that time he had a daughter, now he had a daughter, and he had named his daughter uh, uh, after his sister that had died. And, and the victory lap, he, he took the daughter out. It was very emotional and very nice. But you know, that atmosphere of persevering, of continuing to do the right thing. I think that's a great message for us during Lent, because typically today, we would gravitate to deal with the temptation. And, and challenges and sin. And, and that's obviously a very prominent theme in, in the readings. I mean, after all, the first reading we hear about the first sin, Adam and Eve, St. Paul is actually referring to Adam as the first one who disobeyed and then uh, the obedience of Jesus as a contrast. And of course, we have the temptations in the gospel that give birth to Lent, the 40 days, 40 nights of Jesus in the desert, preparing for his public ministry. But we typically, this Sunday, we would immediately gravitate to the temptations. And they, you know, Jesus is facing the Antichrist in the desert. And, and they're going at it. And he's giving the basic temptations, you know, the easy Messiah, do, you know, change bread, change stones to bread, and kind of like the spectacular Messiah jump from the temple and, and then the worldly Messiah. So you have the very three uh, strong temptations that Jesus could have felt and certainly they would affect us as well in, in our own way. But as I reflected on Lent, I don't think that God wants us to ponder so much on sin and temptation as to ponder upon the perseverance that we're supposed to have. That we need to work these days kind of like not giving up, kind of like continuing the commitments that we have made. And that's what Lent should be all about. Not to ponder on bad things and how terrible we are and how much we're tempted and how sinful we are. That's a reality. I mean, we can't evade that. But the antidote is actually the 40 days that Jesus lived. And as I reflected on the readings, it's interesting because. Notice that we don't hear about the Antichrist, about the devil, until the end. It's after 40 days and 40 nights. So Jesus persevered, and actually he's even going to persevere through the temptation. So whether he was alone in the desert or alone in the cross, he persevered in what God wanted him to do. And that's the point. That's what we're thinking about. And even in the first reading, which we have the uh, very impressive account, of the first sin, the sin of Adam and Eve, you know, I was thinking to myself, even there, you know, you have that notion that they did persevere for some time. Actually, the writer of the book of Genesis says that the serpent was the most cunning animal in the garden. He was the most cunning. So that tells me that there were other animals, and perhaps other animals tried before, but they didn't succeed. But the serpent was the most cunning. So he finally succeeded. But the point I'm trying to make is that there was some time. It was not like Adam and Eve were created and the next day they sinned. 
That didn't happen like that. That doesn't seem to be the account. Actually, they walked with God. They spent time with God. They were blessed because they had been created. And the beauty of creation, the beauty of those first spouses, you know, and, and the book of Genesis wants to present that view as well. So it was not like all of a sudden, immediately, they were doomed and damned forever. But no, they did walk with God. And that's the emphasis. Can we walk with God? Can we stick to what we have committed ourselves to do during Lent? Can we persevere in that way of prayer? And then what God is saying is, if you do that, I'm promising you that that will be a blessed Lent. Look at my son. Look how he persevered. Look like he took it to the limit. He went the distance. He didn't give up. He was able, because of his perseverance, to fight the evil one, to deal with temptation. But don't lose sight of those 40 days. Don't lose sight of whatever happened before the first sin, because that's the key. That's where we need to be. And that's what God wants from us. I don't know if you've heard the story of the two kids that they were learning math. They were learning how to do addition in math. So one of the kids tells the other, if you have two dollars and you ask your dad for four dollars, how many dollars do you have? And the first kid said, two. And that other kid said, you don't know your math. And the other one said, you don't know my dad. <laughs> we know our dad. We know what God wants from us. And, and he doesn't want us to falter because of sin and temptation. Actually, God wants us to persevere like Christ, to do what Jesus did, to be able to fight the good fight. That's why I think that imagery of sports is so helpful because athletes go through a lot of sacrifice and a lot of turmoil, and it's a daily thing. You cannot just all of a sudden think you're gonna be the greatest because you think so. It's not gonna happen like that. It takes that daily effort of doing what you need to do to be able to compete well. And I think that's the message for us. And as we do that, one day, hopefully, we will experience the ecstasy of victory. Amen.